Hi! We're overjoyed to have you back to watch our new video. Now, keep your attention on how you want to feel. And the universe will fill in the details. You will know your power when you can no longer split your energy flow. Thank you so much for your interest and support. Every relationship that everyone wants is because there is a chance that that other person in their connection to source energy and in their adoration of you will be a catalyst to help you connect with your own source. That's what being in love is. That's that feeling of in love. Somebody holding you as an object of attention and adoring you. And in their adoration, they connect with source. And in their attention upon you, they flood it all over you. So it's sort of like a roundabout way to connect with source energy. It's like they just draw your connection from you. Mm -hmm. What we want to say is, as you practice your connection with source, no matter what, with a partner, without a partner, no matter who you're with, under all conditions, as you keep reaching for the relief and therefore bring yourself into greater and greater, more constant connection with this source energy. Now, the reason for the relationship really becomes what you've just said. In other words, you say, here I am, mostly connected powerfully to source energy. And now, universe, please bring me another like that so together we can open an even wider vortex and soar even into greater ecstasy. Most people, even though they're using words like you are using, are really saying, well, I'm not soaring yet, but that would do the trick. In other words, that's the one missing link that would help me to soar. But when that disappointment comes over you, that's still in your vibration, which means that if the partner were to come right now, it wouldn't quite be where you want to be or where you want the partner to be. And see what happens. This happens to a lot of you. You set your vibrational standards for a partner, but you don't match it yourself. And until you match it, that partner can't come. So what does show up are those who match where you really are, and they keep not measuring up to your image. This is good, isn't it? Yes. So, so... So you have to match your own image vibrationally. So the game we would play if we were standing in your physical shoes, it's a process we call scripting, we would script it into being. Esther saw a movie on the television many years ago. The screenplay writer or someone, she came in the middle, she never really understood the whole plot, but he seemed to have this magic typewriter. And whatever he would type for the storyline, for the pretend life, would then begin happening in his life. So if something would happen that he didn't like, he'd just write it differently and then it would happen differently. And Esther said, well, wouldn't that be nice? And we said, that's exactly how it is. If you accept that you're calling the shots and you begin writing it, then as you begin seeing the evidence of what you've been writing showing up, then you begin to gain more confidence. All of you have had experiences where you thought you wanted something and you thought you saw an avenue to make it happen. And that avenue fell through. Maybe it was purchasing a house or a car or finding a partner or, or any number of things, a work environment. And then later, a door opened that was perfect. And you realize if that other thing had happened, then I would not have been available for this. And so as you say, the universe knows what I've been asking for because even without my words, I've been expressing it through preferences and vibrations for a long, long time. And now my work is about preparing myself vibrationally to let in what I've been asking for, which means I got to be happy in the absence of it. And that's the thing. In other words, we would say to a sick person, you got to be happy while you're sick so you can get well. And they would say, well, if I were well, then I'd be happy. We say, no, you have to be happy even when you're sick or you can't get well. And they say, but I can't be happy. I'm sick. And we say, but you got to, You got to find something to focus upon that lets you feel happy more of the time or you can't get well. If the illness isn't very severe, then you don't worry about it that much. You are distracted from it. You do other things. And eventually it peters out because the wellness is a stronger vibration. While there are some who have an illness, they get focused upon it. The doctors focus upon it. It becomes the only thing that they really ever think about. And the illness overtakes them, not because it is powerful, but because they find a vibrational match with that, you see. So sometimes, especially on the subject of relationships, we've been accused of just wanting you to get so happy with your fantasy world that you don't care if your partner ever really comes. And we say, that's exactly right.
You want to get so happy about life in general, as you said, so many things going well, and so happy with the idea of what's coming, and so comfortable in your knowing that it is coming that you don't feel any sting about it not having been there. And then say to yourself on Valentine's Day or during those holidays when partnerships are amplified, say to yourself, the universe has something very special in mind for me and I'm willing to wait for this perfect relationship and on Valentine's Day go buy yourself whatever you would have liked to have received and put it on the table and write the script in other words isn't this sweet this is a thousand pound box of chocolates <laughs> all for me we don't want you to need to rely on the action in order to produce the emotion. And yet, you live in a world where you've already established your trajectories. You live in a world where you are already accustomed. There is already some momentum going. So, did you play that game? Did it resonate with you? Was it something you wanted to do or did? Esther did. She put that $100 in her wallet and she spent it all day long. All day long. All day long now a hundred dollars wouldn't go far enough for her and so the idea of it is to find a way to feel prosperous and knowing that when you feel prosperous the law of attraction will say well here's a prosperous path and here's one in other words in in today's conversation that game you know the hundred dollar process we, we've explained it well enough for you here puts you on a trajectory of prosperity so that prosperity must find you and the stories that came back to Jerry and Esther from people who began that process of all kinds of things that began happening in people's experiences and the thing that made it most exciting for them and for us and for Jerry and Esther is that these people who were applying it now had an absolute correlation between the feeling that they had deliberately induced and the universal response to that feeling you could use that process to work for you or you could use that process to work against you but if we can convince you that you're wanting to do anything that you can that makes you feel good because that means it's working for you so in the same way in the absence of a relationship you have to look for the components of what a relationship would feel like and acknowledge that you've already got something comparable to that hundred dollar bill in other words Esther because she was so sort of dependent upon the relationship that she had with Jerry for company for good company for all kinds of intertwining in all kinds of different ways so she just started noticing well this is a really fun person to talk to on the telephone and this is a really meaningful thing to person to talk about here in other words she began noticing that there were lots of ways of satisfying that relationship in lots of different people and in doing so there's no absence of that vibration because what you're reaching for is happiness in the now yes you have to find a way of soothing the void but that's even backwards in the way we're saying it to you because when we say soothe the void what are we focused on the void so let's focus upon the soothing not the void the soothing well Abraham what am I soothing the void well then think about being soothed think about feeling good think about having fun thinking about being at one thinking about think about the your inner being think about source energy who is always with you we want you to know that the reason that most people are looking for a partner is because they're trying to fill the void that really can only be filled with alignment anything that makes you feel satisfied with where you are is a beneficial thing now often that scares our physical friends they think oh you ghost you're not really interested in our manifestation you're just interested in us uh, satisfying ourselves in the absence of what we want and if I get really satisfied with the absence of what I want then the universe won't give it to me because I learned from my mother the way to get things was to throw a fit <laughs> and if I act happy before I get the thing that I know I need to make me happy then is the universe going to really give up the goods and we say ah oh, please tell us we're past that understanding that you understand that it, you never get anything through throwing a negative fit.
You always get it through soothing your point of attraction. It's the whole point of understanding what your grid is. It's the whole point. And so with this grid conversation, what we're wanting to lead you toward is choosing the disc that you want to be on without needing an excuse to, to be on it. Thank you for stopping by to watch this video. Make sure to subscribe for the next video.